Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately. Hey, hey, hey Matt. Rude. Hey, Matt. It's your pal Adam. I'm just checking in. Hey. Okay. All right. Hey, Matt. All right. Matt, you're, you're rolling. Yes. I, uh, I, you know, you know that like come boys, we like to do parody songs. Yeah. About oh, yeah. where we involve having sex with our fathers. <laughs> So I like to, you know, I'm a little bit more of the uh, news junkie uh, of the crew. So I like to also make parody songs ripped from the headlines, mm. but also have them involve having sex with my father. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a new one I was doing in the shower today. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be funny. We can cut it if it's not. But um, this is uh, the to the tune of a Don't Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> But did that guy kill himself? I remember there was like a thing. Like, do you know that guy that did Don't Bobby McFerrin? Yeah, Bobby McFerrin killed no, himself. He did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, my daddy's dick is larger than life. Mine is small and naughty, but nice. Don't worry. Coffee fee. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that brings in the the meme that we're all talking about, guys. <laughs> Kafifi and uh, it a little bit of flavor about having sex with your dad. Um, so I just wanted to bring you know my my perspective to the show. Uh, the best I memes <laughs> combine two. The best jokes combine two or more ideas. Yeah, yeah exactly. Adam Friedland joining us, yeah. everybody. We got Adam. We oh, got hey. Adam. Adam in the trap. You save space where he is respected, and I just want to extend our welcome to Adam. You know, it, our political humor. <sighs> Kafifi is fake news. <laughs> oh, yeah. Felix, yeah. have you been like sort of remixing like '90s like pop punk songs to, to be about um, incest and Donald? Yeah, yeah. No, I've been doing that. I've been. Uh, I was. Uh, I have this idea. You like, did the What's My Age Again? What was well, the yeah, version? Well, you did? my first show for What's My Age Again. And, and I, I'm afraid it's going to be cut by sens censorous producers because <laughs> technically we would get sued. But it's uh, Alan Dershowitz <laughs> listening to what's what's my age again, and he's like, "Oh wow, this is not at all what I thought it would be about." <laughs> but uh, no, I was thinking about if. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, it is bonus. He's probably not a gray wolf, but. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> and it doesn't say accuse him of anything. It's just saying he's listening to you know, it. And somebody, he's confused. somebody yesterday did a tweet joking about how they like just realized that the Blink One Eighty Two album title "Take Off Your Pants and Jacket" is like a double entendre with jacket, and it's about masturbating. And it wasn't until I read that tweet that I finally got it. Wow, you loser! I never got that. <laughs> I just thought it was just a stupid phrase, dude. I, I and now. Uh, 20 years later, I'm like, oh shit, it's about masturbating. Those guys are way cooler than I thought. <laughs> Blink-182 has this song called Stay Together for the Kids, which is about divorce. I watched, I was on a like, uh, you know, nostalgia music video trip a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and the first frame in like the all, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, like black with white font, it says 50% of American households are destroyed by divorce. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a fucking oh man there's it's the best disclaimer before a music video of all time i, I was I reading i was reading the blink 182 wikipedia article for the same reason and uh when i got to mark hopus's one it was like i was a really normal kid until my parents got divorced <laughs> and that's what made me so twisted that i started blink 182 <laughs> now correct me if i'm wrong which one of the blink 182 front men tom is, is now a serious ufo researcher tom yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well first of all he started a band called angels and airwaves and kept saying things in the media like i have just created the greatest album in human history <laughs> and then he released this album which is all about like we're looking at the stars <laughs> you know it's just like and planets you know <laughs> and then um and then like 6 months later he says uh, he 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 released a statement that said um, I was on a ton of back pills and I thought I was making the greatest album of all time, but it turns out that I was just in a an opioid induced frenzy and I just uh, used a lot of delay pedals and you should not take those quotes seriously. But now he's investigating. Uh, now he fucking broke the fucking greatest band up to investigate UFOs. That fucking coward. <laughs> I saw uh, Mark Hopus is like a Trump Russia guy now, and someone I saw someone replying to him 
They're like, sir, Mr. Hopus, sir, do you know if the 25th Amendment will be invoked against President Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, this is uh, down a similar path. I was just reading today. Did you guys see the thing about how these two Silicon yes. Valley dipshits have this yeah. new... Well, like, this has got to be like on their agenda as potential candidates, right? Yeah, well, check this out. It's, it's called the WTF Caucus, and it's like... Oh. It's Whoa, a, yeah, 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 it's yeah. so irreverent. It's these two Wait a silicon- minute, there's a swear in there? Well, no, it doesn't oh, actually shit. stand for what the fuck. It stands for win the future, I think, but oh. it's like a cheeky... Oh. Never mind. Okay. There are these two like Silicon Valley shitheads who are like going to create the next move on.org to like disrupt the Democratic Party, and they're like... You know, we we love the Democratic Party. We think it's gone a little too left in some areas, and not enough in others. <laughs> I wonder which where yeah. is. But anyway, in it, like mentioned in all of the press about like th- their platform and this new think tank, and the pe- the person they're interested in running for office is the former le- frontman of Third Eye Blind. Hell yeah, Stephen, Stephen Jenkins. Jenkins. Stephen yeah. Jenkum. No Jenkum. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Jenkum. Yeah, me, me and my boy. Me and my boy Todd Fuck, who started Revolution Partners. We invented. We invented. <laughs> The Juicero. Um, we have a new new political movement. It's called the N Word Caucus. And no, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. It's a double entendre. N Word is innovate, and we're gonna we're gonna run um, we're gonna run the guy from NXS. We're gonna bring him back to life using technology, and he's gonna jack himself off on stage while auto asphyxiating and be like, Donald Trump, sir, this is what you're doing to America. Sorry, I just it says uh, the the guiding principle behind Win the Future, a new project by the tech duo that's launching in time for July fourth. The effort, called yes WTF for short, aims to be a new movement and forth within the Democratic Party, which can act like its own virtual party. Said Pincus, lead architect, during an interview. <laughs> My favorite uh, response to that was from a guy, another tech dick, who says, "Yeah, you know what? I don't. I feel like this is just trying to." You know, stay within the Democratic Party. I think what America needs is a new party, a party of people from both sides who understand the importance of decorum. It should be called the Dignity Party. Uh, and it would include people like John Kasich and Hillary Clinton. Okay. And, and everyone who just – and Susan Collins and everyone who agrees – that we can get together and have common sense solutions as long as we use our inside voices. And the real fucking kick is that the guy in question is the blood-sucking vampire who runs Ticketmaster. Oh. oh. And, and one of the worst rent-seeking shitheads of all time. But, and no, he's like, it- you know what? I think uh, there's a way in that we could be in the middle. <laughs> and, and, shock. and his two, like... Uh, Figures of dignity are a hobo and a woman who faints and vomits all the time. And Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, didn't they have that song that was about, like, being on meth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Sammy Charm kind of life, bro. Yeah, exactly. So he would be the perfect <laughs> candidate to tackle the opioid crisis. You know? And they also had a song about uh, teen suicide that was, uh, yeah. well, I wish you, you would step, step back, back from, from that ledge, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Cut ties with all the lies. <laughs> <laughs> it should just be all not like Blink-182, that's the Democratic Party. Um, the Third Eye Blind, it's the Radical Moderates. Uh, Chumbawamba, that's yeah, the, the left. Yeah, the left yeah. is mm-hmm. with Chumbawamba. Yep. Mm-hmm. Some 41 is all right now. Some 41 is all right. Um, Tool is now uh, oh, he's like also oath yeah, yeah oath keeper yeah, uh, yeah. situation <laughs> i know my oath fits because i watch the constitution break muslim in office sucking dick what more can this country take du, 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 du. he's eating dog in the oval office du, 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 du. have you no decency <laughs> oh man wait a minute is he is that true yeah yeah is yeah he's made yeah. a james keenan a fucking oath oh yeah keeper? No, I don't know that's, if he's an o- uh, that's uh, oh, that is tool. Sorry, yeah, I, I don't know if he, like, I don't know if he's an an oath keeper per se, but he's very right wing. Like I saw something recently from him where it was like a photo of him, and he has a vineyard apparently. Yeah, no, like, I saw some awful documentary about him building some shitty vineyard <laughs> in Arizona. <laughs> that sounds like the worst Arizona thing you wine country. Possibly. The finest. I think that was the a, most arid state in America. It was a Werner Herzog documentary. He's like, <laughs> how is this crazy man in the middle of the <laughs> desert who <laughs> made 
makes professional <laughs> butt rock. <laughs> <laughs> he may, his songs appear to be about the complicated math that Americans do in high school. <laughs> no, he's he like does a, songs about the cosines. He's like a Blue Lives Matter guy, and I saw this thing, uh, something online, where he was like, uh, it was a photo of him at his vineyard, and he was like, you know, capping it, being like, uh, I got a request, like online, someone asked me if uh, if the wines produced here are vegan. And I said, they won't be now. And he was like literally like <laughs> dropping bacon into a cask of wine. Just and I was like, wine worse. Yeah. yeah, the thing like having just rotting meat in a cask of wine. But yeah, that, that's the yeah. singer of Tool when is you're, now. When you're fucking shitting your guts out from trichinosis, <laughs> you know that you're owning the libs with every bloody bowel movement. Also, like, well, I mean, I got to say, what kind of moron asks if wine is vegan? Yeah, I mean, that's a really I stupid question. So. I was thinking you know about what? that. I'm starting to think that actually didn't happen. No, I, I was, well, I was thinking about it and it's like since i heard that i was like yeah like 90 percent of things like this that question wasn't asked like i see some of these things where they give the guy a perfect setup where it's like uh 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 is there a safe space in your gun corporation <laughs> <laughs> so like whatever guy can be like yeah there's a safe space it's called the safety on my gun before i shoot you <laughs> no, that's, that's a real thing i don't know if it applies to wine but i know in uh some liquor production processes they use uh a filter of some kind that involves an animal product yeah oh, so okay. vegans can't drink certain liquors that's why there are vegan bars yeah i made a girl uh dinner once and she refused the wine and then, uh, and then refused uh, the condoms that I had because those weren't vegan either. Apparently, <laughs> we can cut that from. The <laughs> no. uh, yeah, she refused you. That's is what you're saying. No, I had to go with a boner to the bodega to get uh, lifestyles, which are vegan. But Trojan apparently uses animal products because she had a phobia of any type of animal. Why am I still talking? And now well, you know. What, <laughs> knowing, what animal product? I mean, the only Trojan animal product condoms. is in I like think the, the lubricant, maybe. Hey, well, this something. is the animal product right here, <laughs> baby. Hey. The only animal product in them is like right on the center of the tip. So if you just like prick that out with a pin, <laughs> and then put it on, you're fine. You're good. <laughs> Hey, you know, if you laugh at those vegans, but if the British army had used vegan uh, gun cartridges, the Sepoy Rebellion never would have happened. That was when they, they, they used, they greased their bullets with like uh, t tallow, beef tallow. Oh, right. and, and, like, beef you know, and pork and all the Muslims and Hindus. They were pissed off everyone, that. basically. Uh -huh. um, but just to, uh, as long as we're on the topic of, uh, you know, like the, these sort of like uh, fake outs that people take seriously. Did you guys see the thing about uh, like the, the new hot thing on the alt right is making up Antifa protests and then have people come up to counter protests? So it's like you're kickstarting your own protest by creating a fake one. And the one that happened over the 4th of July weekend was they created a they were like Antifa is going to be burning Confederate flags on, at the Gettysburg battlefield this weekend. All patriots show up. And a bunch of people did, including one guy who like shot his toe off with a blunderbuss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that rule. Yeah. But that's so instructive because it shows that th at this point they're still afraid to show what they actually want, you know, because they, they basically – that's why free speech is their stupid uh, rallying cry. It's because they are still too circumspect to come out and be like, yeah, uh, white nationalism, that's, that's it. That's what we want mm. because – you're right. They, 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 they're worried about a backlash from that. So instead, they they need to have some people disrespecting history or some shit to excuse them standing around in their fucking cargo shorts, uh, improperly carrying guns. Do they th do they actually think they're trolling Antifa by doing this? Like, has anyone ever shown up? Like, hey guys, I'm here for the uh, anti-fascism rally. I don't know. I think it's. I don't know if it's like trolling per se as a way to just kind of get their message out there and make mm -hmm. Antifa people look bad or I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I remember uh, I, that was the one that was the Gettysburg thing you're yeah, talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. Where the guy shot himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, uh, I, I saw a guy who, he was like a fucking three percenter uh, biker guy and he posted these pictures of a deserted street in Gettysburg with just like some motorcycles there and says, yep, not a single Antifa in sight. Uh, I'm out enforcing right now. <laughs> yeah. This is like the, the, the bear patrol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm not surprised it happened because if you had to 
have me guess which cast member of Eight Mile would end up in the alt right, I would have guessed Cheddar Bob. I think they should keep. I mean, I think Antifa should get behind this and just like keep making up fake events because for these like three percenter oath keeper I like so too, middle yeah. aged guys, it's like yeah. that's just a whole day for them. And, and, and this is just wasting their send time. Send them to Burning Man. How yes. hilarious! Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Just Tell them say- that there's a massive Antifa protest in the middle of the Nevada desert. <laughs> And uh, if they're on a unicycle, that means that they hate uh, Reagan. (laughs) And you should just fucking mow them all down. They don't use currency because they're fucking... What what is that? Uh, They're burners. They're burners. They're burning burners. I mean, uh, like, if you actually, like, want to fight and harm those people... Like, most Americans don't know how to fight. Uh, it's just a, every video I see from those rallies where it's like, Proud Boy Pete's the shit of Antifa. It's just too, like, a, a skinny fat guy falling on another skinny fat guy. But if you actually want to harm them, just, like, let them stand around by themselves. Like the, In August heat? Yeah, one of them will collapse. Like, they keep accidentally shooting themselves. <laughs> or oh, having yeah, a heart yeah. attack. That asshole at the Sharia march in New York just yeah. had a fucking heart attack yeah. and died on the stage. <laughs> Take that, Islam. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I was, I was, I was thinking like about the, these fake protests. Like, I think we should start doing this and creating like fake Antifa protests to get, uh, to get like Proud Boys and other other various, uh, you know, uh, Keck related groups to show up to. But it'd be basically like the scene in Police Academy, but we uh, set it at the Blue Oyster Bar. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean. oh. <laughs> oh, me and Virgil were talking about the Armenian guys that like stabbed that proud boy the other day. Oh, yeah. who's, who's that guy? He was like the bodyguard of like Big Alaska the or something. Uh, stick imbecile has a bodyguard who's just a fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know the full outline of the story because all the sources are from them, and they just like make shit up all yeah. the time. We- it might as Will just be a fucking hoax for the fucking. But first, like, I, I saw a photo of that guy in a hospital yeah, bed. A hospital. So their their version of the story is uh, they were fucking <laughs> downtown Los Angeles or somewhere <laughs> thereabouts, and they were uh, I guess they were out in full force with their fucking uh, wooden shields yeah. and their <laughs> mismatched helmets and their fucking you know mop heads, and uh, I guess they were out you know defending Western cultural values in this area which is dominated by these. Uh, this Armenian gang. <laughs> Armenian power, like one of the most terrifying gangs in the world. Yeah, they, apparently they like uh, pushed uh, MS-13 off their yeah, turf once. Yeah, Jesus. in Glendale. <laughs> and so, yeah, these, I mean, these people's grandparents were like the people that killed all the collaborators in the Armenian genocide a hundred years ago. Damn. And so they show up, they're just like in America and they terrify other people who kill people. And then they just see these guys in like <laughs> hockey masks and wooden shields. And they're yeah, like, what fucking the cartoon fuck? frog signs. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, Kafifi, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, I, so like, I, I saw the photo of that guy like laid up in a hospital yeah. bed or whatever, and I was like, this is my bodyguard or whatever. He didn't <laughs> look like a bot. He didn't, he, he just looked like it's a. a- he, he looked large. I have a suspicion that that did not actually happen. I, my guess is that they were making keke, they were making Pepe masks at a Kinko's, and he accidentally lanced his scrotum with a three-hole punch. Uh, well, my guess is uh, he uh, sat in a kitchen drawer. But I have uh, my I nominate that um, he had he had like a Pepe tie on under his combat uniform, and it got caught in a hot dog roller. <laughs> Uh, one, of the, one, one of the funniest it's, things. It's worse before I get better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, that, this is true for both the white civilization and the hot dog roller situation. Uh, one of the funniest things I saw from that was uh, um, that that fucking bake, baked Alaska guy uh, posted. Just heard that base stick man's bodyguards in the hospital heading there right now. Going to start streaming in fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, imagine you're like dying and base baked Alaska is like, yo, can I get those hearts going for uh for white civilization? This is the last thing you see before you die. Is this is so uh, like we were talking Yo, we're doing a rap song for the troops, but only the white ones. So it it dawned on us that <laughs> <laughs> it's not us that the primary Proud Boys, the ones who wear the, the literal LARP costumes and go around, are reviled by every normal person that they meet in society. Like, Felix was telling me about some video where uh, Proud Boys were just getting beaten up by 14 year old skater kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got chased out of the park by these skateboard kids. And, like, you see them, it's like, who the fuck are these guys <laughs> yeah, coming yeah, up the hill? Got, like, some Oath Keepers, speaking of the Oath Keepers, 
they like in Houston, they like just grabbed some dude in a fucking headlock and pushed him out of their shithead protest because he was waving a bunch of stupid meme placards and they thought that it made them look foolish. I, mean, I don't know where they got that. <laughs> oh, idea. that video is great. Sure. That video is all. And if you read the comments to the video, just like a bunch of other fourteen-year-olds, like the guy who got choked, being like, "We're gonna fucking kill that guy." <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah, they should. Uh, I don't know if there's Channel One is still a same thing, but they should start every school day with that video. It's a scared straight day. <laughs> the guy just whining like they're good memes. They're, <laughs> I, I thought, yo, yo, dude, I thought I would make friends. <laughs> They're good memes, Brent. So send them, you know, if you want to make a fake event, just send the Proud Boys uh, anywhere. Uh, uh, we liked a, 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 a place in the Armenian gang territory that's like literally a front. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just say like, oh, they serve halal food. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't have I, any, got, they don't have any uh, refrigerators. That, uh, Antifa is going to be tagging Confederate monuments in the Pacific garbage patch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Antifa is doing a die-in in Death Valley for Black Lives Matter. <laughs> we need to go there with double as many people. Bring a lot of milk. No water. Just milk. Yeah. Just milk. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) What I would like the most about this is uh, I presume now the Proud Boys are like, Armenians are no longer white. They're not Caucasian. Well, they, they probably thought they could make common cause with the Armenians because they're like, well, you got genocided by Muslims, too. <laughs> Which is, is, even like a terrifying gang member like sees the guys in the masks and fucking base stick men. And they're like, any normal person's reaction is just immediate bullying. And yeah. the AP Armenian power version of that, of bullying, is just to stab someone. So, Well, this is actually a, a good segue uh, from, you know, the fascist movements of the past and present coming together. Uh, I saw a uh, this news item just today, and uh, I knew we were having uh, Adam on, and I knew we had to talk about it because this one is also sort of a callback to the uh, the last time you were on, Adam. Mm-hmm. One of the things we discussed was uh, uh, NBA basketball player uh, Danny Green. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh, selfie at the Berlin Holocaust Memorial. Yeah, had to do it one time. Hashtag Holocaust. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's probably uh, one of my favorite selfies on the internet. It's 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 so, up there. So fucking yeah, good. it's up there. But um, to to one up uh, uh-huh. the Spurs, uh, Danny Green. There is a now uh, one Clay Higgins. Oh, Clay Higgins from down in Louisiana. He is a Louisiana politician who uh has recorded uh, a special video. It says, I'm, I'm looking at the video right now on YouTube. It says, Clay Higgins has a message for America, dash, from Auschwitz. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just thinking, I think we should just watch this. It's five minutes. We can, we can edit it down if need be, yeah. but I think we should just watch this message from Clay Higgins yes, please. to America from Auschwitz. So. Can be a railroad anywhere, right? <laughs> Except for this one's at Auschwitz. Birkenau, <laughs> the expansion of all choice, where four more large gas chambers were built. They could murder 2,000 people at a time. On these rails, <laughs> rode those poor souls. This is like uh, Hank from Breaking Bad talking to you. Yeah. Great sense of dread. Could I get a Mr. Pib? <laughs> Well, all right. Have a nice day. Uh, the shoes. They love the shoes in Holocaust yeah. Remembrance. What are those? <laughs> 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 all, every single one of their shoes looked like a fam. <laughs> <laughs> they never went down to Auschwitz. He was looking for some souls to steal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh, this should not be as funny as it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! What is his job? Cyclone. Congressman. He's from in the. Louis- he's in the house. He's a house, but he used to be one of those fucking uh, like Felix talked about how the first generation of T-Cats was like. Pissed off small town cops writing letters to Kanye West. Yeah, yeah. he's one of those. That was guys. how he got yep. famous. He was the cop who would write the indignant letters to ungrateful celebrities, and now he's in the fucking Congress. The guards. He's literally in a gas chamber right now, shooting like a selfie video. Cyanide pellets activated. Y'all 
keep those hearts going. Yeah. You like this? <laughs> After about 20 minutes, everyone was dead. And then slave labor. Boom hour, keep that camera still. His yeah. his Cajun accent is incredibly distracting. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, you what you want to do is you want to get some of them juice down. And you want to some of the sack on B, and what you get out of that is you get the you got some genocide right there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now those, now they, these Jews they ain't have no toilets. <laughs> 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 Two, 2010 Jews in 15 minutes, I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Suffocation cell, punishment cell. Ran like, out of I mean, if you're watching, it, it's Die. just his giant egg like head just dominating the frame as he solemnly tells you about the uh, man's inhumanity to man. Did did he just learn about this? <laughs> Every year in Europe, they have an event called the Holocaust. We have to stop this. The world's a smaller place now than it was in World War II. No, no it's not. The United States is more accessible. <laughs> no. Terror like this. <laughs> it's hard to walk away from gas chambers and ovens. Without a very sober need for a Mr. Pibb. <laughs> commitment. Unwavering commitment. <laughs> Make damn sure that the United States. This is like when back. Warren Schmidt visited the Mr. Indian Pibb. Museum. Those people got Some a people raw deal. <laughs> Think of how great it'll be when Trump visits the camp. Oh, oh. I can't wait. <laughs> wait, what? Slideshow. No, that was just some still. Oh! oh. Show that's the yeah, show this, icon. This, yeah, show yeah, icon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, oh, dude. That was, uh, that was. I'm I'm representative gun shithead. <laughs> Primo <laughs> Levy said that there ain't no monsters but men who will fulfill their deeds. <laughs> that's why OSHA has to be stopped. <laughs> the the last image was like the last image is still. Of just his his bowed head covered in a cowboy hat with his arms up. With his police uniform on. With his on police it. uniform on, superimposed with an American and Israeli flag. Hell over yeah, him. Open letter to Adolf Hitler. <laughs> so I, I remember when Clay Higgins ran for Congress first because he was this uh, 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 Joe Arpaio wannabe who did these Crime Stoppers videos that got him fired because he would just straight up <laughs> name like local criminals and, <laughs> and I'm like that he did the celebrity thing but before that you'll be interested to know he's not even really a fucking cop he was a used car salesman just what? like all what? the fucking guys Wait, he stole cop valor he became a cop through some fucking uh, like Steven Seagal did, yeah, yeah, yeah kind Louisiana, of like that. Yeah. Then, he, then he like had jobs in the in the fucking police, and now he's still a legal law enforcement agent in Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh while hell being a yeah! Cop. Yeah, and, and he places he places like uh, McDonald's employees under citizen's arrest when they yeah. don't give him enough fries. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's the guy who posted this uh, Facebook thing a couple months ago, just literally just calling for the genocide of Muslims. He's one of the worst people yeah. uh, alive. Oh, that's no, terrible. but you have to you have to have a genocide of Muslims, or else they'll genocide us. Yes, or else, uh, and this is like this is a good view into his apocalyptic mindset that the Muslims are coming because we have open borders and they're going to set up death camps for us. They're they're building them right now. Uh, yeah, that's what every mosque is. That's yeah. why they have a curved top. That's uh, how they store all the cyanide gas. <laughs> I would say this guy is, you know, setting himself up for a Fox News career, but, you know, he's probably going to be in the Senate in a few years. It's, he's probably he's a very red president. district Fuck in that. Louisiana. If, if Sheriff John Bunnell doesn't beat him to it, he'll be the first cop president. I just am imagining him detaining, like, teenagers being, being like... Y- y- y'all boys ain't planning on doing any Holocaust now, are you? I'm going to ask you some questions about some local criminals you know. Do you know any Ron Hart Hodrick? <laughs> <laughs> I love how that video started off with the train tracks because there's this weird cross-section between train guys and Holocaust people. <laughs> <laughs> where they always talk about how many train tracks there were at Auschwitz. I mean, apparently they were running a ton of trains to get oh, a yeah. ton of Jews oh, yeah. there. Yeah. They were like, Way yeah, better there than like, the MTA. There were like, uh, there were like uh, 14... Uh, 
consecutive train tracks uh, in in the middle of Auschwitz. It was incredibly impressive. With the, <laughs> with the Nazis were able. <laughs> well, there are the Nazis had a very efficient train switch. Yeah, system. yeah. Well, they kept him running. I gotta say, I think this guy's this. I mean, he's getting a lot of heat for this, but I think in the long run, it's gonna blow up in his face because an increasing percentage of his base doesn't think the Holocaust happened. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was the, thinking yeah. about that. Yeah, like. To, like, most of the people who would otherwise approve of the message of this video, when they see it, like, it's like he might as well be at medieval times for them. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of my friends did this trip. I didn't do it uh, in high school called March of the Living, where they send, like, scared Jewish teenagers to all the camps, and then they send, <laughs> and then they send them to oh, Israel the afterwards. Rules. They're like, we're going to scare you with the Holocaust and then show you why we need Israel so much. And it's like this, like... I knew like a bunch of people that like got head and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> We're in Poland. Like I, have, I, I know people that have lost their virginities in Poland because like the girls were like so upset about seeing like Nazi death camps and like these kids would like start acting out sexually because they didn't know how to handle like the gravity of what they were seeing every day on this fucking terror tour that they take kids on. Well, like not only that. Going to Poland just in general it's must suck. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's fun. Maybe, it, maybe May, I think Warsaw is chill. Maybe now. they got a cool club scene there now. Yeah, I think they do actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I I am often just blown away, and, and I can't even get my head around the fact that the most comfortable, secure people on earth. These exurban, uh, suburban, middle class people who form the basis of of the political support for guys like this shithead are a hundred percent convinced that there's going to be a genocide of like guys with jet skis within five years. Oh like, yeah! How the fuck do you have that that level of dissonance between your day to day life? in which you sit on your fucking fat ass and watch TV and then you climb in your fucking SUV and you go and, you know, you, you go to a, a fast food restaurant, you get a gigantic burger and you eat it in total comfort and, and silence and you go home and you watch TV again and you go to your bullshit job and you do that in air conditioning and you never confront a single element of your existence that is in any way uh, difficult. You have no difficulties. While you're going through that life, in your head, you're imagining a world in the very near future where some like uh, some terrorist is taking an AK-47 and like for forcing you onto a cattle car to send you to a gas chamber. How do you fucking like deal with that kind of dissonance? It's insane. I think it's a few it's things. It's genuine psychosis. I think it's, you know, these people have been fed for the past 16 years the most vicious apocalyptic anti-Muslim propaganda. That and they also live in incredibly segregated communities. Matt, you saw that picture that went viral recently of the fucking people on the subway? You all know what oh, I'm talking I, I, about. Yeah, I saw yeah, it today. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 a it's a a viral yeah. picture that shows um, how great America is. Oh and yeah, it's that a, Muslim family. It, I get. It, well, for one, how do we know he's a Muslim lady? guy? He's just it was like. Just, a, okay, the the photo he's is on the, close enough. It was a New York City subway, and it was like a photo of like two little girls, like or like a little girl smiling at a baby, like a, like it's like a, a a mother and a daughter who are white, and then I I, I, I assume a father and daughter who are brown of some like, yeah, like just brown, brown. Yeah. yeah. And the kids are smiling at each other, and everyone is like, "This is what makes America great." And I'm like, "What a fucking low bar to clear for a country." It's the lowest. Wait, is this actually shocking to people in the geo hell that is the middle of the country? <laughs> and I thought for a second, and I came to the answer: Yeah, this is so outside yeah, they people's don't, normal when experiences. You're at the Starbucks in you know suburban shit dick. Kansas or whatever, you're not seeing anybody who doesn't look like you, so you can imagine anything. And I do think that, like, at the base of this is the some there's some sort of primal knowledge to these people that the insane comfort they have is not earned, mm. and that there's some injustice in the world that has allowed them to accrue it, and that there is uh, like a cosmic balancing coming, and they're fucking <laughs> terrified of it. I, I, it's I, like they're all living with that Jefferson quote, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just. It's all there in the back of their head that they don't confront it. And they're so mad about the idea that they would ever be called to account for the absolute just debauched splendor, the undeserved splendor that they live in, that they just become obsessed with these fantasies 
of, of, of massive retribution because they know in their hearts that they have it coming. Like they know deep down the world is changing in ways way beyond their control. Like, yeah, nothing, nothing is ever going to be perfect, but you know, there is, people are always gradually liberalizing on their views. A lot of things and the world in 50 years is going to look totally different than these people's ideas of how it should be. And they also know that they're not going to do anything. These aren't doers. The, their closest thing to action is like going into a voting booth and wedging in there every two years to vote for like Gertz shithead and Clay Higgins. Clay Higgins. And so knowing that they're not going to do anything except like these sort of signaling things like eating Chick fil A and carrying guns to a movie theater, they're totally powerless. But with this, with like Trump, with all of like the, this type of shit, the open calls for genocide, it's more out in the open than it has been in the like 16 years before it because it seems so much more unavoidable now and it seems so much closer to them. And like these people are actually like dying now. We're going to have so much fewer of these people in four years than we do have now. And it's just becoming so apparent to them how little they can change the world to continue in the way that they think it should be. Well, and so it's just think, a spasm. Don't you think that? In the next hundred years, so much of the planet is going to be so uninhabitable that we're going to have these mass population migrations, right? And we're going to have to, at a certain point, account for millions and millions of people having to relocate to different parts of the world. And that's why, like, Syria is sort of a precursor to, you know, these what's going to happen, like, you know, these massive, like, dislo dislocated people, groups of people. So, yeah. Yeah. so like, I think, like, effectively, like, we're going to have this, but times a thousand. Because there's going to be you know, groups, populations that are a thousand times bigger that the world's going to have to just decide what to do with. Like people from Miami, for instance. <laughs> yeah. I, They're not coming here. Yeah, this, no, no, no. I don't want to build that wall on the, the, the state line of Florida. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Mr. Worldwide, go anywhere else. <laughs> well, yeah, but also, I don't like a lot of people don't have the means to uh, uh, even become refugees. And I think in a lot of these cases, people are just going to stay and they're going to die because they have no other choice. People are already dying in Bangladesh. It's a direct consequence. They're just going to stay change. in the sea? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're going to be in areas with yeah, extreme yeah. Uh, climate yeah. events. Yeah. I mean, unless uh, the only thing is, like, unless someone, like, invents something, which is usually how... The two things that happen in human history is either, like, a shitload of people die, like an insane amount of people die, or someone invents something. But that, uh, I mean, that hey, we'll see. Honestly, Felix, that's uh, that is the the Simpsons uh, version of what would happen. Is uh, we have been acting irresponsibly and stupidly for decades, uh, but then someone comes along and develops something that saves us all at the last minute. Yeah, those are accident. the only two things that ever happen. We something's invented where we. Don't learn the lesson we should have, or everyone dies, and we also don't learn the lesson. We're making the shift. We're making the shift as yeah. a civilization to video chat, everybody. <laughs> but actually, uh, Cam Camboy civilization. I just think we're just going to build more and more walls. That's basically it. You know. Um, well, actually, th this is a, this is a good segue to. Uh, we're talking about building walls. We're talking about um, insanely entitled and afraid suburban assholes who just hate and fear anyone or anything different than them, and also. Uh, prank videos online. Oh, hell yeah. And I'm bringing this up because uh, I came across this again today. Uh, Steven Crowder. Mm -hmm. woo -woo. My, mo my man. Yeah, we've discussed him, I think, briefly on the show before. But He I has fought Islam so much by putting on a dress and like having sex with men <laughs> to just to own Islam. He's, he's, like, his classic move is the Bugs Bunny as, as a girl thing. Yeah. But like he, he puts on like a very bad... Uh, drag like, outfit. Yeah, drag outfit, and then like goes to the women's. He's protest. why the, he's, he's why the hidden imam stays hidden. He doesn't want to bump into Steve Crowder. He does. His pranks are just like the dumbest, most thoughtless, like just immediate ideas. He makes James O'Keefe look like the Yes Men. But okay, so like, well, his latest thing that I saw was that he did this video. Uh, I'm just reading here from Conservative Review. It says Stephen Crowder exposes tax-free income and racism of illegals. And their write-up of his latest video is that uh, Democrats like to say that the U.S. needs illegal immigrants because they will do the jobs that our Americans are too proud to and that they benefit because they pay into the system. In his latest video, CRTV host Stephen Crowder decided to investigate that mix myth with shocking results. Crowder and not-gay Jared... 
That's his co-host. This goes by Not Gay Jared. Oh, <laughs> uh, very normal. Hired themselves <laughs> out in <laughs> regular, cool. regular, regular man. <laughs> said, uh, hired them out. Hired themselves out as day laborers and competed with migrant workers for work. The illegal immigrant workers did not like that competition at all. So basically, Crowder and Not Gay Jared. Like they do like a sting where Crowder like pulls up to like a group of day laborers in his like giant pickup truck to negotiate like for like a day's work. And then his friend who's with them underbids all of the, the, the Mexicans. And then he's like, okay, I want that guy. Like you hop in the back. And then like they get Mexicans in the back of the truck and then ask for their papers and then yell at them when they don't have them and shit. So I want to just play you a little of this video because it was... Oh, please don't. Sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, this is also... Just for context. This is also a classic bit from the Tom Green show, which was a thousand times funnier, I'm sure, where it was called Undercutter's Pizza, where he'd follow around a, p- <laughs> a pizza oh, yeah. delivery man yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to houses and then uh, offer a pizza while the delivery guy was up at the door for half the price. And then, like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I remember that. Yeah. The was, Man Show also did a bit like this where they uh, pulled a day laborer and then like took him to get a manicure and shit and just hang out for a day. Yeah, so he's a fucking thief. All right. It's just, we're going to play only a little bit of this. These individuals don't necessarily have a great affinity for American pride, paying taxes, white people, or a good old competition. Same. Hey, you guys have papers? You guys have papers? I need papers. Do you have papers? There's no collage, you motherfuckers. So uh, if you caught that there, that was uh, using mariachi music after they literally just said, we'll call ice on you motherfuckers to some uh, Mexican day laborers. Hilarious. So the, uh, crowd, yeah, great bit, right? right? Oh great. Really, one of the, really one funny. Of the yeah. Very funny. Um, <laughs> so that's Crowder, and I, I saw that, and it, honestly, it turned my stomach so fucking much. But I remembered that Crowder had a great article a while ago about... About uh, virginity? About virginity, yeah. 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 About how... He got married <laughs> the right way. Yeah. And I think I'd like it I think it goes sideways. a little something oh, like yes. this. <laughs> so uh, this is the headline here. Uh, this is under this is the Fo- Fox News opinion. Waiting till the wedding night, getting married the right way by one Stephen Crowder. And the head of course there is a photo of him and his lovely bride. He goes as anyone who's read my abstinence column here at Fox <laughs> News Opinion can guess. <laughs> and abstinence column, of course, does have a hyperlink, and I, I clicked it. And this goes, goes straight to just another article from two years prior that says, why not having sex might be good for you? And uh, he says here, sex, some of us do it, most of us like it, and we all think about it a lot. I know I do. Though I was once told that it was normal. Getting busy really isn't the taboo subject that it once was. So he goes on to talk about how, uh, you know, uh, abstinence is the only taboo left. And if you tell people that you're abstinent, they think that you're not cool. But that's because in his... his, Yeah, that's that's a checkered handkerchief. Yeah. So he says, as anyone who's read my abstinence column can guess, my wedding is something I've looked forward to for quite some time. After having tied the knot at the end of August, I can now say beyond all shadow of a doubt that it was everything I'd hoped and prayed that it would be since childhood. I'd also prayed to be bitten by a radioactive spider and develop sticky hands, but I was an idiot. That's it. That's his, that, that's humor. Oh, that's, wow. He's just keeping oh, okay. it light and funny. There. All right, that's funny. He's a humorist in addition to being an abstinence columnist. Yeah. yeah. Let me preface this column by saying, my wife. I have to get used to saying that. For it. My wife. <laughs> my wife and I not only waited <laughs> sexually in every way. No, we didn't pull the Bill Clinton and technically avoid sex. Sex. Hell yeah. But we didn't shack up. That's and- right, I busted a nut in her fam. <laughs> We didn't shack up as live-ins, and most importantly, we courted each other in a way that was consistent with our publicly professed values. Mm. We did it right. OTPHJ, over the pants hand job. Yep. Mm. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, feeling judged? I couldn't care less. 
You know why? Because my wife and I were judged all throughout our relationship. <laughs> People laughed, <laughs> scoffed, and poked fun at the young, celibate, naive Christian couple. I don't like. I mean, I think they were poking fun of you and no, laughing at you. No, they fucking did it. Well, Shut yeah. the fuck up. Okay, a there's no, nobody. Everyone avoided talking to you. Yeah, which is what everyone does because you're just. Dis- Grotesque Wait, yeah, do you guys know that Steven Crowder is from the show Arthur? You know that. What? Steven Crowder was yeah. one of the voices in the animated show Arthur. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yes. He wasn't no, Arthur. Get the fuck out of here. No, it's, yes, it's he was. True. It's he was. true. No, he's yeah. right. He's right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's oh, true. So he must be living off those residuals because oh, yeah, oh, yeah. certainly his show doesn't. Well, make no, no, any he money. wasn't like a main character. He's like a, like no, a minor voice the, actor. Yeah, he was one of like the bunny or I don't know whatever. No, he wasn't the bunny. Uh, no, not the bunny. bunny I don't know. Was a star. He yeah, wasn't, <laughs> 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 like, he wasn't one of the stars. He was just like some a voice actor. No, character. there was Arthur the Aardvark, and then there was his sister D W the cunt. And, <laughs> wow, and then, wow, wow. And she used wow. to fuck everything up. No, no, D W is a queen. Uh, she's I in think, all of the memes that. You know what, you know I think you know she was a C-U-N-T, and I know, I, I know Amber's not in the room right now, so I know I'm with my dogs right now. <laughs> I don't know. But I didn't like her. What's okay? your problem you know what with you? a woman who's, who speaks up for herself? Uh, I don't know if she spoke up for herself. I think she used to fuck with Arthur's shit all the time. <laughs> but he was going through some serious changes in life. And he was at an age where he was, you know, maybe hormones were coursing through his body. And, you know, you know, we've all seen the famous picture of him with the headphones on the side of his head when the, his ears were on the top of his head. <laughs> you know, we, we, we know he's just struggling with growing up. And, and his sister was always there just to highlight how big of a loser he was. And I think that's pretty jacked up uh that's friggin <laughs> well, jacked i don't know up. i don't know why 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 your reading of the situation is centered on arthur and his issues the protagonist and his values and what I about identify. her issues and her inner life and her women values? are never centered it's true i think that uh she was a i think she was a bully and a troll and uh <laughs> <laughs> i think arthur i identified with because i was around the same age as him and uh, i was probably going through some of the same aardvark problems that <laughs> <laughs> okay so there was arthur there's dw isn't it there's... ironic how arthur uh dw like... was named after uh dw griffin <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the uh, the racist, the famous racist filmmaker? Yeah. If you uh, thought the stuff that she did that made it into the show was bad, yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty ironic that uh, Arthur is such a big hit on uh, Black Twitter, whereas Stephen is such a big hit with people who fantasize about murdering black people. <laughs> oh, the, the crossover. Uh, is yeah. <laughs> Wait. So who who was Stephen on the show, Arthur? Uh, we we can look it up. I mean, he was one of the guys. Yeah. I'm sure someone will. Figured out one of, one of the ants. You know, yeah, that show, yeah. they're still making that show, right? Arthur? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I think they are. Yeah, bring Steven back to Arthur. My dad got, uh, <laughs> got, uh, he said that we were in trouble because he was getting rid of the cable, but I think he, like, got a dispute with the, the fucking cable company. And he's like, we're getting rid of cable. We're going to read books. And then I just started watching PBS. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was the voice of Brian, no, Brain. Brain. On Arthur during seasons five and six. Yeah, yeah he's not living. Oh, up he was the voice of that. Brain, but he didn't get Brain until he was twenty-seven. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nuts. Yeah. One of those. Wow. Things. Well. Wow. Going down the Arthur rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. <Fucks> to yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to speak. Um, the Aardvark <laughs> hole. Yeah. So uh, b- back to Crowder here. He says. Uh, um, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, like okay. So he's pretending that everyone mocked him, which, as Matt pointed out, like a nobody probably talked to him, and b there's nobody in his social circle that would uh, think less of him for being as big of an asshole as he is. So he goes. Everyone said that we'd never make it to our wedding without stupping, and if we'd be stealing Jewish valor right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a uh, classic comedy yeah. speak. And if we did, our wedding night would be awkward and terrible, they said. Turns out people couldn't have been more wrong. Looking back, I think that the women saying those things, he says women saying those yeah, things, yeah, not yeah. men. Okay. The women yeah, saying yeah. those mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the women saying those things felt like floozies they ultimately were, and the men with their fickle manhood tied to their pathetic sexual conquest felt threatened so he goes on and on about this and they're like what I like about this story is that um, it's not just him bragging about how good his wedding night was with his virginal bride is that uh, he talks about how like the uh, he says um, the day after uh, we ate breakfast at a local inn we discussed how excited we were to start the rest of our lives together how scary it was that everything was now so different at the same time, we overheard the table next to us discussing their very own wedding night from the night prior. Mm. What a coincidence. The thing is, nothing has really changed, the bride said. 
puzzled, my wife uh, asked. This happened. Did you get married last night too? So did we. Congratulations, the other dame said. Yeah, we did. Just <laughs> last night. <laughs> Disgusting. Where's the groom, my wife innocently, scratched that, naively asked. Oh, he's sleeping. There was no way he was coming out with me this morning. She paused and smirked. Let's just say he's got a lingering headache from a really good time last night. My heart sank. Firstly, that poor schmuck's good time was simply getting snookered, not enjoying the company of close family and long-lost friends with a clear head and clean conscience, not staring in awe at his beautiful new wife, wanting to soak in every glimmer of her eyes as she shot him heart-racing looks from across the dance floor, not taking all of the cheesy pictures as they cut the cake, even carrying her across the sweet threshold as they nervously anticipated their a nightcap. He probably won't even remember any of it. Instead, he got smashed. He was that guy at his own freaking wedding. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I like that he's taking this opportunity to um, shit on this ima- totally imaginary yeah. couple. Um, which you know, once again, didn't happen, and uh, mm-hmm. then he made up. Um, but like, he just made up this person and just being like, because the guy is sleeping in, he just assumes that he was like too shit faced. Also, like, what does that have to do with fucking, right? It's a yeah. yeah. alcohol. It, it, yeah. He's saying that alcohol is bad. He doesn't say that premarital sex is bad. Well, yeah. I mean, he should just convert to Wahhabism. Yeah, if it's he true. cares that much about alcohol. <laughs> so he goes on and on. He says, uh, "Then I realized something. Our wedding was truly a once in a lifetime event." It was a God's honest celebration of two completely separate lives now becoming one, physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. Everything that made us who we were individually was becoming what bonded us together. Our family travel. So like, blah, 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 blah. I'm glad he had a wonderful wedding. I'm glad he's uh, so happy with his wife or whatever, but I like that he needed to invent a theoretical other couple to shit on. Mm -hmm. And then he just goes at the end and says, your wedding can be the most memorable night of your life, or just another party. Oops, did I just make a judgment? <laughs> You're darn right I did. Oh, bitch, go <laughs> off. Uh, I mean, isn't this just all conservatism? You you do something that's uncomfortable and shitty and kind of sucks, and then to justify why you're doing it, why you're following these completely arcane, weird rules that, like, you know, if you want to follow them, fine, but you think you're a better person for having done them. You have to invent people that are being mean to you. Like I genuinely I don't give a shit at all. If if you, if you want to remain abstinent until wedding and you want to have that kind of relationship, I don't know anyone who would like, you know, you know, judge someone for that. If that's what they've chosen to do, I will laugh and judge at fucking a piece of shit. Like Steven Crowder, every time he opens his mouth, because he's, first of all, I don't believe him and his wife were actually versions until marriage. Second of all, He's only doing this and writing this so that he can call women who don't wait until I have marriage floozies and harlots and say that the other pathetic men were just, you know, weak compared to me because, you know, my cock got in, a, got in there first. No one else has ever so, been in there but me. So, Will, if I recall correctly, uh, Stephen is like original grift was he was like a comedian right like a stand-up yeah, comic yeah yeah he and was like a conservative comic yeah conservative right? comic and then he did this uh, abstinence column I guess and he keeps alluding to being a Christian but never really specifying it so like any of these values are just skin deep and then after uh, Breitbart happens he uh, realized that oh the real grift is in this like uh, the shock videos, yeah. and so he started like doing like just the most execrable pranks against the most vulnerable people in society. Well, it was like the video he just did with these day laborers, where he's like, "A oh, fact one, uh, they hate white people." Fact two, and, like, and then he goes on about how like four hundred dollars a day, that's fifty. He'll do a little math here. Yeah. That's fifty grand a year, tax free. Like. And I'm like, good. I hope they're getting fifty grand a year. Yeah, they're they're like, absolutely not yeah. getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah not exactly. Getting. Dude, does he think they're working like? <laughs> yeah, they're working every, every day, fucking day. Fucking yeah. well, this is like so, this is an obsession that's on the right, but I also see it on uh, like on Imgur people about uh, not about day laborers, but about homeless people. Yeah, it's like yeah, you shouldn't give money to homeless people. Uh, they make twenty five dollars an hour. 
yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone is like, yeah, I'm in the know. I if I if I go to a large urban area, I don't give money to the homeless people yeah. because it's all a scam. And like from my perspective, I think yeah, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna sit on the sidewalk and just kind of look dour hour after hour, then yeah, I think that's worth twenty twenty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, who who gives a shit? People make a hundred million dollars a year because they were just really good at selling, it just tricking people into buying these shitty financial instruments. If like just some guy, if he's gonna pay the price of like flattening his nuts, like fine, I don't care. People grift the system way worse than that. At least he's spending it on something cool like Fent. And not, my friend's uh, a mind freak uh, street magician, and uh, oh yeah, the guy who broke his dick. Yeah, he broke. His dick. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well. He's uh, he's you know my you know some might call what he does a grift, but I I think it's pretty cool. Um, but like it, it broadly, like Crowder, you know, like he's gone through like several iterations. Yeah. But like his main one is that like he. He was trying to be like the conservative who has the bite of the political comedy apple. Yeah. But like they can never get their their teeth around it. You know, and I, I guess like I'm wondering like there have been attempts at it, there have been stabs at this. Like, but I, like after that video. Well, red eye. Like, yeah, red eye and like that kind of thing. Yeah. Like and it's just like they're all sort of stillborn. And like it, it's because they're it's both because they're genuine like the people that it, it's not like there are unfunny people with reactionary opinions out there, but it's just the people who they always line up for this are terribly, terribly unfunny. Well, uh, as we've, I think we've discussed before, and Felix pointed out, it, and Matt, it's because they get too mad. Yeah, like once they yeah. once they get too into the weeds of their joke, they start to realize how mad they are about how the libs run everything, and then they just end up doing a rant, which isn't actually comedy. And the other thing is that, of course, Stephen Crowder thought he hit the big time with the help of Andrew Breitbart by becoming Fox News's resident uh, impish, you know, uh, provocateur. Um, kind of a pre-Jesse Waters or parallel Jesse Waters, but they let him go because, as one Fox News executive said, he's not very funny. <laughs> no, he's not. And like from that video we saw, it's uh, we, that's like the big payoff is just screaming, "I'm going to call ice on you." He and said, "We're going to call ice, motherfucker!" Over yeah, mariachi, mariachi music. Like, best you're when he you're got, a monster. He got I mean, you're an out. execrable person. He, yeah, got, he got knocked, knocked out, out by, by that trucker, old fat union yeah, guy. Yeah, that, that was the funniest thing he ever yeah. did. But like, that was the funniest thing he ever. I mean, like the. I don't think it's imp- like I think that for me too much of comedy it, it works both ways because too much of comedy today especially with Trump is people just trying to make good points and people not trying to make jokes so people are like trying to make these you know these great points about like oh how Donald Trump's a traitor or whatever but what you're really getting is just all these guys at fucking open mics in Williamsburg that are like I'm gonna take Trump down with this joke of mine which is like really honestly fucking pathetic and you know so and also I don't know I think that like it it doesn't work I think it works sort of both ways I think that you know you see it with Dennis Miller you know he's trying to make <laughs> jokes about uh, Obama like by like dropping like Peloponnesian war like <laughs> references yeah. and he thinks like that's really gonna bring down the fucking house bro <laughs> But like, yeah, it's like it's pretty pathetic. But I think it's also the sad thing is, is that it's sort of happening on the left or whatever you want to not the you know the the other side like the both sides do yeah, it. The sad, I mean, I mean, I think yeah. John Oliver's show is like well researched, but I don't know if I find it funny. And like, do you really? Do, are you really good? Like, if you have thirty minutes, are you going to really make like have enough time to be funny and to make good points i think it's like kind of a it's like that's that's not really like the good of an idea remember the half hour news hour from the, like when the daily show was really like the the prime john uh-huh. stewart like no matter what you think of his politics he was actually like a very good comedian for that format so conservatives were like well we can have a funny show too and then the half hour news hour which was just all these like bewildered birthright ladies who were like uh, Democrats have a new tax plan. It's for M- Monica Lewinsky to give a blowjob. <laughs> it just—it was so bad. I it was re- like kind of—it was kind of endearing. But then now, like Trevor Noah is in there, and his punchlines and everything—they're as clumsy and like overextended and self-righteous as half-hour news hour. So it's I'm really sad that you know 
I, you know, I, I kind of got tired. I like John Stewart, and I think he was at doing that job at doing thirty minutes or you know twenty two minutes of new stand up every night that's been written for you. It's not an easy job. Like I, what Trevor Noah's doing isn't easy. Like they both do it well, and they're both like polished. Even if the writing isn't always the best, like I admire like what they're able to do. But like once the once Colbert started. I thought that it was like doing really satire in a way that like American comedy hasn't really been able to do in so long. And it's so, it's such a bummer that that character doesn't exist anymore because he was able to actually make jokes about what was going on, but do it through the guise of this like lost, like imbecile. Yeah. 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 And like, that's, I I mean, seeing how, where Colbert has turned into really tells you how just barren and awful the political quote unquote comedy scene during Trump is now. Yeah, it's a because bummer. Somebody made a joke to me the other day uh, after that god awful thing where he was complaining about people saying that Trump is a symptom. He's obviously like the disease because, you know, it's not like Trump is just the apotheosis of a million cultural trends that have been going on for years. No, he is this singular thing that has destroyed American discourse, which is just an insane thing to think. And when you look at how uh, insightful and incisive. Colbert used to be on this point and how he was making fun of this very trend during the Bush years. It's sort of baffling. But somebody said, no, you don't get it. On his old show, Colbert was was satirizing a dipshit conservative. Now he's satirizing dipshit liberals. And that's <laughs> really the only way to make sense of his show. I mean, I think he's brilliant. Like I, Stranger to Can- him and Stranger to the Can- Oh, it's one amazing. of the funniest shows, so one funny. of the most underrated yeah. comedy yeah, shows yeah. of the last few years. I completely agree, but I just miss that character so much. And I think that he's. I mean, I know that his ratings are good now because because uh, everyone's like fu- like fuck Jimmy Fallon. Like he's like trying to do Jay Leno. Like both sides are crazy. Kind of. <laughs> Ah, the, the left is crazy and the right is crazy too. And I don't know. What- Can't you hear about the Proud Boys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, folks, watch out. Antifa are putting razor blades in apples. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, folks, have you noticed that it's always interracial couples and soup ads? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with a white couple? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you know I'm not racist. <laughs> oh, the best, the best is when he used to. Kevin, I gotta say, uh, you know, being racially intelligent is not being prejudiced. <laughs> yeah, the best was when Kevin, he used Kevin, to do you the- hear about this uh, bell curve? You hear about this? <laughs> <laughs> he used to do that bit jaywalking, like out on the street, like yeah. his man on the street thing, and he like asked people like civics questions, and when they didn't get it wrong, he'd be like, "Ah, you're a fucking idiot." <laughs> 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 ah, who was the who was the first president? They'd be like, uh, I don't know, Thomas Jefferson. Be like, oh, look at this fucking idiot <laughs> on Hollywood Boulevard, where the smartest people in the world are. Fucking <laughs> idiots. That's the best thing with that fucking star shit. That that meme, that star meme, is like. That just Hollywood Boulevard should just be fucking bulldozed. It is the worst place in America. That's like where like you know the fucking uh, like homeless Spider Man is like and, and fucking like like athletes foot Pikachu and like all those like fucking caricatures that you have to like pay money to take pictures with. It's like, it's like Times Square. It's like yeah. Times Square. It's like people are going to honor the president in Times Square. It's like the most fucking pathetic. I gotta movie. say what yeah what like when. The day that some dipshit going there, either either way, either way, like to shit on the Trump star or to polish it, gets like stabbed by one of those uh, people dressed up like like a superhero. That will make it all worthwhile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like hypodermic like, needle Elmo, man. Like <laughs> break somebody's neck while they're like spray like spray painting the Trump so- uh, star that'll make it all worthwhile that, that's Antifa Deadpool oh <laughs> Trump star <Yeah. laughs> oh that's that's the next thing is all these people have to dress up like there has to be there has to be like a black block Neo a, a proud boy fucking cable from X-Men <laughs> just like just have repl- make it make Hollywood Boulevard like make that the battleground that's the only place where they can I, fight I, I really want to meet uh, Oath Keeper Batman on his Hover around. Yeah. All right, you guys want to do this uh, this Ben Shapiro Virgin article? Let's do it, boys. Locked Let's go. And loaded. Locked and loaded. Okay. So, I was doing Crowder and his Virgin article, which I didn't believe, and then I remembered Ben Shapiro, show favorite, friend of the show, a constantly recurring guest. Uh, he also had a Virgin article. He had a whole book about this. And unlike Stephen, I actually believe Ben. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is in uh, Town Hall. 
from uh, 2005 under the headline Rescuing a Generation. <laughs> this is Ben That's Shapiro. Scary. This is histor- it's an historic article. Ben Shapiro, this is a historic post here. Uh, he says, as I explained in my new book, Porn Generation, <laughs> how social liberalism is corrupting our future, in today's America, being a proud virgin is no easy task. Those with values are under attack. (laughs) In a culture that treasures tolerance above morality. It's no wonder that because of my outspoken advocacy of traditional morality in general, and of virginity in particular, I've become a favorite target of internet leftists who often refer to me as, quote, the Virgin Ben. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, um, the internet is riddled with writing like this, quote, in Ben's case, it is helpful to remember that some people choose celibacy while others have it thrust upon them. Poor Ben. He no more chose abstinence than Clarice Thomas chose to be black. So. Yep. Uh, and then another one, the Virgin Ben also apparently has never had a really great Saturday night. The Virgin Ben, indeed. This guy's interview so completely reeks of repression that I almost feel violated reading it. <laughs> like I stepped in someone else's wet dream. It's freaking eerie, man. <laughs> so he just goes on to list all the things people have said about him. And he goes, such heated, inarticulate, and unreasoned hatred for moral standards should not be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Social liberalism seeks to promote a live and let live society, wherein all types of deviant behavior is tolerated and accepted and by deviant behavior he means getting your dick wet before your wedding night or or i'm sorry i don't mean to make that male oriented it means you know having sex before your wedding night experiencing the wonders of magic of human sexuality before a priest or rabbi gives also you he also means gay people yeah, yeah well yeah, yeah obviously yeah, yeah. he means anyone yeah So he goes, um, those on the left have thrust their notion of a civilized, amoral society upon all of us. The fact of the matter is that a live and let live directly contradicts the notion of a communal society. We all have to abide by certain rules to live together. An amoral society minimizes the rules which we live together. Is this the the, the, uh, fucking doctor from from hell? (laughs) This is exactly what he's saying. Any change in those rules is bound to affect us all. No, it's not. Yeah, no, none it's of this not. is. No, no, this no is it really, true. It really you also isn't. you also don't support a communal society. Yeah, <laughs> support some kind of no go- low small government fucking libertarian psychotic thing. This uh, reminds me a lot of that. Uh, do you remember that kid Pruin Two Forever? That YouTube account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wait, no. Yeah. Wait. What? Yeah, he was like this like little kid that you know was growing up on the internet and not that self aware, but he had some amazing videos. Um, and, uh, my friend Brandon Wardell used to be really obsessed with him when he was. Oh. in High friend school. of the show friend of the show uh but he had one that was like hey hey everyone stop looking at porn <laughs> <laughs> i'm sick and tired of all these guys looking at porn just go find a girl and have sex with her <laughs> <laughs> uh it's like pretty much as like advanced and nuanced as ben's argument here i know he's going on uh to he goes um <laughs> By discarding traditional morality in favor of amoralism, we have catered to the lowest common denominator. Social liberals have taken control of our culture through music, film, television, and other mass media. R-rated films today often include softcore pornography. Television shows like Friends promote a fun-filled, promiscuous lifestyle with no consequence. Friends, <laughs> friends oh is his example of rampant amorality. Yes, Why friends. didn't Rachel get scabies at any point? <laughs> this bullshit. <laughs> friends. Friends. Which, what, what the fuck? Like, should they have stoned Monica to death? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Can yeah. someone tell me how they're living in such a nice apartment? <laughs> How come they're on time to everything in New York City? <laughs> uh, he continues. Rap music is misogynistic, yeah. glorifying its own degradation. Pop music holds a lot of cultural wrecking balls like Madonna as empowered feminist heroes. Madonna. He's writing this in 2005. That's by so the way, old. Friends yeah. and Madonna were like 10 years gone by that point. Oh, even more. Like, yeah. being a, like the moral panic about Madonna was like 1984. <laughs> yeah. Like a virgin. Yeah. Yeah. He's just uh, copying grown-ups. Advertisers. Yeah, he is. That's his yeah. whole thing. That's his crap. 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like he's just been inside reading like Edmund Burke his entire life. So he watches Married with Children and he's like, oh, this is what culture is. This is what we're still <laughs> no, talking ben about. Was, ben was definitely one of those. Um, I, I listen to real music, the Beatles, <laughs> uh, the Rolling Stones. I listen to a little guy named Beethoven and Civil War Marches. Uh, ben also says advertisers take advantage of sex sells phenomenon to push our culture to new lows while teen magazines for young girls push boy craziness and dispense dating and sex advice. Ben is worried that teenage girls are too boy crazy. Oh man, he's just copying grown-ups. Yeah. yeah. He's just like a he's just one of those he's kids of those that speak was speak and say like puppets who oh. just like just says what like the adults are in his community around him. Oh, like, I say. feel so bad. Oh, because those kind of kids used to just get bullied so bad i mean he's a piece of shit obviously yeah. but like there was a kid i went to school with that was like that who shit his pants in uh <laughs> in third grade <laughs> and like he was one of those like uh listen to the listen to the teachers guys <laughs> and then, and, like that's ben and that was ben's original grift was the college student who's actually conservative and like s- sexually conservative for an audience of like 80 year old <laughs> yeah yeah who all think like his bow tie and his roller backpack who, are like, just incredibly cute and so he writes books that are like porn generation yeah i mean that's that's well, all he just them. wants like, to meet the granddaughters i mean yeah like going back to steven crowder if you like look at his facebook like there's like an all right amount of views on his videos of course he does like one tenth of what any uh let's play guy does but like you th- minecraft yeah theme. yeah all the battlefield guys that I like to watch, but uh, <laughs> I do have three favorites. But uh, you think about it, and it's like, oh yeah, no, there are just like a lot of sixty-year-olds who like do now know how to use a computer, and of course, the first thing they'll see is like the the very good boy who likes the grown-ups and tells nice jokes He's about the Muslim Muslim rape gangs He's and like not jacking off. Yeah, uh, you know from. Do- from there, he became, uh, well, he got made fun of a lot and, like, just wrote a bunch of articles like this that are just quoting, like, fucking Daily Coast and Fire Dog Lake, just ripping on him. Yeah. And from there, he, he wore that as a badge of honor where everyone's like, Ben, you're pathetic. Ben, you're fucking wrong. Yeah. Ben, they didn't send the fucking weapons of mass destruction to Iran from Iraq. What the fuck are you talking about? And he, and he, he uh, uh, took that to mean, oh, he's so low that he must be correct. And his new shtick is, uh, I'm the logic guy. I'm uh, facts. Don't care about your feelings. I do facts and reason, but it's not. It's not facts. It's 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 sophistry. The best one of the best Ben Shapiro videos is when he's on that dais with the the uh, this trans woman who's in the OJ documentary. You remember the oh, helicopter, the, helicopter, helicopter yeah, 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 yeah. camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camera, yeah. Per, yeah so yeah, do you yeah. remember when uh, Ben was like telling her like that she's not a woman, and he's like, yeah, facts don't care about your feelings, and then she's like, uh, she's like literally, she's like a. Uh, uh, you better watch your tongue, sweetie, because you could leave here in a stretcher. And he's like, uh, "This this woman has <laughs> she has threatened my life. I will be telling the police." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I think that sums up Ben. Yeah, just yeah. perfectly. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just fucking tattletale. That kid who shit his pants. Like, I think he's like a research doctor now. But like, literally everyone from my third grade is like, "Oh, yo, you know what Eric's up to?" It's like, "Oh, you mean Eric is shit his." Pants. <laughs> I think like no matter what he accomplishes in life, he'll always be the kid who shit his pants. I mean, that's like that's probably the plurality of the conservative movement. It's the roller backpack kids. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ted Cruz. Ted oh. Cruz is the ro- Ted Cruz yeah. is the kid who, starting in eighth grade, shows up to class in suits and is like, "Good morning, my dear sir," to the teacher, and has just been called a faggot so many times. <laughs> that that his like senior quote was like, "I'm going to take over the world." <laughs> like yeah, 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 like yeah. those kids that think that they're like evil masters. Oh no, no, like I, Ted I, Cruz. Yeah, in, yeah, Ted yeah Cruz. in in like seventh grade, uh, my friend took like this summer math class, so he wouldn't have to take a requirement going into eighth grade, and he told me about this kid who is like I'm not taking it because I don't want the requirement I want to advance I want to be a genius <laughs> and that kid is pro- that kid's probably Stephen Miller yeah like, he probably works in the White House yeah those now. kids that think they're evil masterminds are the best like the, the <laughs> puny humans kids <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You simple humans! It's like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, Jared, dude. Like, we're trying to learn. Uh, just last thing about Ben and his assault on the porn generation. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he says here, we live in an America that makes Paris Hilton a cultural icon and Jenna Jameson, a New York Times best-selling author, 
I bring that up only because Ben and Jenna are now Twitter buds. Yeah. And they like they 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 chat on Twitter because Jenna Jameson apparently loves Ben Shapiro now. She's a big Shapiro head. But I thought she yeah, loves she got Trump. engaged to some like Israeli diamond dealer. <laughs> and now she's just yeah. straight up Lakudnik. You know who she dated before? Uh the the MMA MMA guy. Yeah, yeah. Tito Ortiz is the dumbest fighter in existence. He uh, who spoke at the RNC? Did he? Yeah, he. No, that or was Dana was White. Dana yeah, White spoke Dana at the White. RNC and was like, but he spoke at Trump rallies. Tito he spoke at Trump rallies and it wasn't political. He was just like, when the UFC was down in the dumps, <laughs> Donald Trump said, "I'm going to come to <laughs> fucking fight," and that's what he's going to do for us. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's like less crazy than the other shit. He's going to come. Donald Trump is going to show up at all of our pageants. But, um, what I, what I love about like that Ben wrote a whole book about pornography is like imagine the research, like not had, watching porn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the, the not <laughs> he had just watching Ben Winters I went undercover in the bank bus. <laughs> 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 I took a job as the bank bus driver for several uh, sorted those girls months. Are not amateurs; they're clearly professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I've like seen to, them at other works. I don't like to compare ourselves to our heroes in arms protecting us against radical Islam, but I took a hot load to the back of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think it's really touching and nice. <laughs> I think it's really nice that Ben and Jenna are friends now. Yeah. And like Jenna is like she's like she tweets about like campus snowflakes like like that's yeah. her whole like, wait but group. I thought she was real Trump and but he's real never Trump yeah but that like yeah, they believe but, the mean, same no, shit fucking, they yeah. believe the same shit you yeah. know yeah like there's no real cognitive dissonance there it's it's like, really just about who's better at brutalizing poor people and Muslims yeah, that's really that's, yeah like that's what the never Trump movement is for guys like Ben that Trump isn't going to efficiently terrorize people in the it's way like that he, he likes. He's too dumb to carry out the great purge that needs yeah. to happen of the undesirables. There are levels of intricacies of, of the Gideon protocol that he cannot even begin to understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, guys. A-OK? Adam? Very good. Yeah, Thanks again for joining so us, much. man. You, we were, always a pleasure. We were so excited to do the, the return Adam's return. By the oh, way, yeah. Adam. By the way, Adam is creeping up on Derek Ooh, Davison. Yeah, that's right. As, as the number one Chapo Who's guest, Derek Davison. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird. it doesn't matter. Adam, <laughs> Adam and Derek are both Rand Corporation scholars, and they're both Middle East experts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do have a degree in Middle Eastern studies, uh, which I got before the Arab Spring, so everything I learned is pretty useful. <laughs> <laughs> All the books ended in like question marks. Like they were like, "Do we know what happens next? Not sure." <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Cheers. Till next time. Bye. 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 Bye.